Let me ask you a question. Do you feel as if you are living a life or are you living out patterns? Let me explain. In a recent episode, I talked about why we wear masks. And clearly, this is masks off for people pleasers and perfectionists. So I've talked about the masks that we wear. And when I talk about masks, another way of looking at what I'm trying to describe for you is that we are living out patterns. Welcome to the Mask Soft for People Pleasers and Perfectionist podcast. I am Kim Gross, your host, and it is my mission to help you unmask from people pleasing and perfectionistic behaviors so that you can finally have the confidence to live the life that you truly desire. Let's tune in to this week's episode. Whether the pattern that you are living out is that of people pleasing, that of perfectionism, maybe the pattern is that you're always controlling, maybe your pattern is that you're rescuing or that you're trying to be super productive. Maybe your pattern is to have tons of achievements and accolades and your life is defined by the things you have on the outer world. So I want to share with you a story that has been told for a long time. I think I first heard this story when I was listening to a podcast from Tara Brock. And the way the story goes is that somewhere in Southeast Asia, let me pause for a second and say, if I get some of the details of this story wrong, I apologize. I may not have it exactly right, but you will get the gist of what I'm trying to say. So several years ago, many years ago in Southeast Asia, there were a group of people who came upon a statue and the statue had some cracks in it. When the people got close to the statue and they shined their flashlights at this huge statue, it was a Buddha statue, and when they shined their light in the cracks, what was reflected back to them was pure gold. And the story is told because the underlying message or the moral of the story is that this Buddha statue that was pure gold was covered in clay and plaster because it was a way that it weathered the storm. So as the years went on, it just kept giving, getting covered in all of this plaster, all of this clay, and you could no longer see the gold until these cracks started to form. And as the story goes, the cracks started to form because there was a severe drought. So it was starting to dry out and it was starting to crumble and had these cracks. But the moral of the story is that we can take this story of the Buddha and we can compare or relate it to our own stories, our own lives, and how we use masks to cover over our pure gold, our gold within, our inner light. And so I detail this in my book, my new book, Free to Be, that is out now, Free to Be a Pathway to Inner Liberation. What I share in the book is that we start to develop these patterns, these masks, these ways of being in the world. And we think that it's who we are because it feels so familiar. We think that if we are a controlling person or a rescuer or someone who fixes all the time, we might say, well, I've always been like that. That's just who I am. At the end of the day, you might be a very kind person who wants to help others. That might be a part of who you are. But if you're coming from an energy 
of you have to fix or you have to rescue or control because you're in lack or scarcity or it is your way of coping and dealing with situations so it becomes a protective mechanism that's a different story that's a whole different energy than you're being a kind person who wants to help out this person or help out that person that's a pattern and i'm going to probably venture out and say that you learned this pattern from your caregivers either you witnessed it as i did with my mom was a people pleaser my mom was a martyr she was a caretaker she was a rescuer and by watching her live out these patterns all of my life by osmosis and by watching modeling i carried the torch i carried the baton and carried on with many of those patterns so it's not necess- it's not who we are it's a way that we either again we adopt them from our caregivers or in the case of like people pleasing and perfectionism i developed those two patterns i started to wear those two masks because that's how i protected myself because i learned at a young age once again that it wasn't okay to just be my true self. And I say this all the time. For those of you who listen to my podcast, and thank you, by the way, for being such a loyal listener. I really appreciate that. And so you probably have heard this. And also, it doesn't hurt to hear these things over and over again, because I need to hear them for myself as well. But for those of you who are new, you will be hearing this for the first time. So I had to learn subconsciously, of course, because I was really about 10 years old when I started people pleasing, perfecting and performing. And it was a way of protection. So again, these are patterns that we develop subconsciously. They happen to us without us even knowing that they're happening because we're so young. And then if we just aren't aware And we have never learned or been told that this is a pattern, this is a mask, you're not being your true self, you wouldn't know that there's anything different. So one of my deeply ingrained patterns is fear of, it was, sometimes it still can be, but one of them was the fear of vulnerability. And that one really was ingrained for many years because, again, I didn't want to put my hand on a hot stove and get burned. I got burned once. I would try to share my true self with someone that was close to me or someone I love. And lo and behold, that person discounted me. My mom, for example, would say oftentimes, how could you think like that? How could you say such a thing? How could you believe like that? That's not, you're not my daughter. And so those types of things. Now, again, I have to always say, side note, caveat, my mom didn't know that she was saying these, when she said these things, that they would be harmful to me. And she was just doing what she knew how to do. She was repeating a pattern that she learned from her own mom. So these patterns can be generational as well. Often they are. She just did what she she was conditioned to do. So when she said those things, though, nonetheless, it still hurt. It still taught me that it's not okay to be my true self, to be vulnerable, to either cry or have big emotions or to just share what's in my heart. And at the end of the day, I knew somehow inherently that the way that I wanted to connect with others or that the best way to feel connected with others was to be able to share heart to heart, that I could share what's in my heart and what in my mind, and then you would reciprocate and we would connect. And that didn't happen because I was putting on a mask. I wasn't allowing myself to be seen, to be known and to be heard because I was too afraid of the rejection. 
And that is often what underpins or underlies why we don't share ourselves because we are afraid that if we do, we're going to be rejected or abandoned on some level. We're not going to be accepted. We're not going to belong. And we're wired for this. We are wired for belonging. We're wired for connection. So it's a safety mechanism. This primal state of being, it's our fight or flight that kicks in and says, ah, nope, I'm going to protect myself here because it's dangerous. And But what happens is that we end up feeling disconnected from others and lonely as a result. It's so, I felt so, so lonely for many years. And I'm just wondering how many of you can relate to this. Think about this. Do you feel like deeply connected to the people in your lives? Or do you feel like you're on the surface? Talking about the weather, talking about if you are married and you have kids, the things that have to be done to take care of the kids or the things that need to be done around the house. And it's on this surface level and you're connecting over that. And really, when you deeply want to just go below the surface and go from the head down to the heart or the mind to the heart and really connect there and you just either don't know how or you're unwilling. And it's such a lonely existence. It's such a lonely way to go through life. And not only do you end up not feeling connected to your loved ones, but then you lose this sense of connecting to yourself. And that's the real tragedy. When you are separate, you feel separate from your true self. When you disconnect and cut off, from your true self, that's the real stinger. That's when you just want to numb because the pain of being disconnected from your own little, your own self is too painful. So you'd rather just keep yourself super busy to avoid, distract yourself from it. Or you may find yourself overeating, having any type of addiction or more than one addiction. You may find yourself just being stressed out because all you know how to do is be productive, do, go. And when you do slow down for a moment, it's whether it's 10 minutes or something, or you're in the car and you're by yourself and you're with your thoughts, you're really super uncomfortable. You are uncomfortable in your own skin because you have been separate from your true self for so long because you have been living out these patterns and not living a life. Brene Brown, she says that the cornerstone of connection is vulnerability. And then if vulnerability is so key and so important to connection, and part of that is taking an emotional risk to share yourself, with another person, I'm going to say a couple things. One is I use this phrase that says to love with a smart heart. So what does that mean? That means that you do want to use discernment and you do want to be mindful about the people that you share yourself with. Again, Brene Brown talks about this all the time in her books. You don't want to share your heart with someone who you know is going to just be mean, abusive, unwilling to see you, unwilling to hear you because of their own baggage, their own issues. They just can't hold that space for you. So loving with a smart heart is saying, okay, maybe with those people, you are going to keep it on the surface. You are going to just talk about the weather. And that's fine. You accept it for what it is. But the people that you have in your life that you can tell and you know are safe, those are the people that you want to have in your inner circle. And then you share yourself because it's such a yummy feeling when 
you connect on that level, when you connect heart to heart with someone. And when someone sees you and they get you and they understand you and you know that they're interested in you and vice versa, it's reciprocal. It's such a yummy feeling. So those people stay in your inner circle. And then you just go out from there. Some people that are just going to be associates. There are some people that you might need to just have a lot of space and distance between spending time with them. And it could be your own family. It could be your family of origin. You might only talk to them or see them every so often. Or if you talk to them on the telephone, maybe you only talk to them for 10 or 15 minutes and you limit it. So that, and that is loving with a smart heart. So vulnerability is key to connecting with others and to be able to then have this connection with yourself. But you can only do that when you are able to be your true self. When you're able to take away the plaster and the clay as they did on the Buddha statue and let your gold shine. You have to be able to tap into the gold that you are. So for example, once I started to become more of a conscious parent and I started to do my own healing work, I was able to then show up differently with my own two children. They are now 25 and 22. And I started that journey when they were 13 and 10. And I wasn't perfect at it. And I didn't do this all the time. However, I would at least on their birthdays and Christmas and other times too, I would just say it to them, but at least on their birthdays and at Christmas time, I would write each of them a card. And in the card, I focused on the, their gold. I focused on their essence qualities, not things like achievements or accolades. Although sometimes I would say, I'm proud of how well you did in school this year. I'm proud of the fact that you did blah, blah, blah. But most of the time I was focusing on things like saying about my son, I love your courage. I love how honest you are. I love your spirit of adventure. And all the different things. And I would just go down the list of all the things that are inherently his goal and his essence qualities. And then I would do the same for my daughter. I love how sweet you are. I love your sense of humor. I love the way you laugh. I love the way that you speak up for yourself and so on and so forth. So I was celebrating the gold within them. And every one of us has that gold. We all have that gold from within. We were born with it. It's inherent. We came into the world with the gold. The problem is that over time, we started to cover it over with the plaster and clay or aka the masks that we wear. And so that's why I wanted to write the book, I, my book, Free to Be, A Pathway to Inner Liberation. Well, I wanted to write it for several reasons. One is it was such a healing journey for myself. But two, I just want to share with you, with all of you, what's possible when you start to remove the clay, when you remove the plaster, and you see your gold, you tap into your gold. There's such a difference in the way that you show up in the world. You start showing up as your true, authentic self. And you start to have more inner peace because now you're not pretending to be someone who you're not. You're not living out these patterns. You're not living according to other people's expectations. You're living your life the way you want to live your life. You're not afraid to say, no to people. You're not afraid to speak up because you know that beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are worthy, that you matter, that you're lovable, and that you have sovereignty over yourself and over your life. That's why I feel so passionate about this work. And that's why I wrote the book and I go into detail about how I journeyed from 
living in victimhood, living as a prisoner in my mind to all of these patterns, to all of these masks that for the longest time, I did not even know I was wearing them. I didn't even know that I was living out patterns. It just felt like it was my life because it felt so familiar. And so if there's anything that I want for you to maybe start with, it's to become super focused, like laser focused and become aware of your patterns, become aware of the fact that they are patterns and that they're not who you are or they're not your life. If you want to know and learn more about these patterns, I teach about all of them. And you can go to my website, kimgrosscoaching.com. You can see a list of the people-pleasing and perfectionist ones. And if you want to understand and become more aware of even more of your patterns and you want to work with me one-on-one, you can do that as well. Again, just go to my website, kimgrosscoaching.com. My link to my website is in the show notes. My link to my book is in the show notes. You can go to Amazon and if you like it, read it. I would love for you to leave a review and reach out to me because I can help you to identify your patterns. I can help you to become so keenly aware of when a pattern is sneaking up that you can catch it in a second and then you can shift into doing something more powerful, more positive from a place of abundance. Or another way of thinking about it is if there's a line of consciousness, when you're living out your patterns or playing those out, you're below the line of consciousness. When you become aware of that and you can pause and you can shift your mindset and your way of thinking, now you can come above the line of consciousness and you can pick a different behavior, a different choice, a different action. But when you're unaware of it, you can't change anything because you don't even know. You think this is just how it is because it feels so familiar to you. So... I would really love to be able to help you if you are wanting to unhook from these long-standing patterns that I can venture out and say you have probably been playing them out for decades. And if you're tired of it, if you're tired of being on the hamster wheel, just spinning and nothing changes because you keep doing the same old, again, Albert Einstein says that's the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. If you really want a different result and you want to break free and you want to be free to be and you want a pathway to inner liberation, then I invite you to reach out to me. I really, once again, appreciate you being here and listening. If you are just catching my podcast, you're new to it, I encourage you or invite you to subscribe. And if you like it, go ahead, leave a review, five-star review, and keep tuning in every week. I have a new episode every single week. Until next week, everybody, have a great one.